All right, what is going on, everybody? Quan Credible here with the review for Four Nights of Apocalypse, Chapter 46. And this chapter was really hype. Like, this was like a long time coming chapter for a lot of people who were pumped about Donnie and what he was going to be able to do because this chapter was essentially all his shine, which is hype to see. Now, at the very beginning of the chapter, we get like those last little bit of wrap up moments with um, Annie versus Burgie, where, you know, Nansen's was just saying that, you know, Burgie's clones were like the worst thing ever for Annie's, you know, ability to detect lies and malintent and all that that kind of stuff which is true we talked about that last week it was like literally the worst case here like that that was the worst matchup that could have been had out of their group and after that we got annie kind of like referring back to donnie's fight like saying you know like nice fleeing skills there donnie and she's kind of it's funny because she's being a jerk here because she could totally help like she could really jump in and help him since she's finished her fight and it's not like she's like horribly injured or at least doesn't appear to be horribly injured but she intend but she 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 instead just kind of goads him like oh yeah you're doing pretty good over there donnie <laughs> like why don't you just float him away with that magic of yours even though like she probably hasn't been paying attention to his fight but he really can't do that seeing as how his impact works so donnie's like in, in a rough spot but donnie just says he can't do that to which door knocked is like we can just straight up fight fair i, I won't even use magic for you and then donnie like parries one of his attacks and says he's gonna hold him to that which was weird because up until this moment we've never actually seen donnie fight fight and getting into the fight with him and door he was doing really well like i was I was I was mad shocked because I thought the dining chapter would be only about his powers, like about his abilities, not actually about his actual combat skills. But Donnie can actually fight, which is it's kind of through it. It really threw me for a loop because as soon as I seen him like parrying attacks and like flipping this knife around and like all of the fancy knife stuff, I was like, dude, this reminds me of um I don't know how many of you guys have seen Magi or yeah yeah have seen Magi with uh, Alibaba in the beginning when he's fighting against the um uh, what's the name Jamil or Jamal it's, it's not Jamal <laughs> his name's probably Jamil it's not Jamal <laughs> but he was fighting against Jamil and like up until that moment you thought Alibaba was kind of like a punk but like he knows this like fancy knife fighting style and that's what I thought about Dinah. I was like wow he can actually fight and I'm actually really okay with Dinah being able to fight but just never showing it because he never really had an opportunity beforehand because with Pelgar which I want to say is the first person we've ever seen him try to do anything to he just tried to lift him up like they never actually engaged in, in a fight um he wasn't really there for Talisker to fight against it like he wasn't actually there to really fight him like they never had a up close and personal like exchange and then the same thing for ironside like he ran immediately and to be fair ironside well outclassed anything donnie was probably capable of so i mean i don't really blame him for that one all like that and then elgin they already had a plan set up so it's not like he had an opportunity to fight elgin trap either so it's like that we've never actually had this opportunity to see donnie fight fight so this is kind of fair and it's more than safe to assume that his abilities to like fight and parry attacks i mean he did train with hauser for a period of time before he left his training so it's not like he just knows how to fight for no reason at all so i'm perfectly okay with this it makes perfect sense now i will say the only thing that kind of does bother me is his reason for not fighting you know first of all ask him like you know how come you never showed us how like skilled you were before and he's like oh because if i hit people there's blood and it looks painful so essentially Donnie doesn't like to hurt people mixed with he doesn't really like blood all like that it's kind of like a combination of those two things but I feel like it's more probably the former than the latter if he just really doesn't like to hurt people it's which is like it's not a bad trope because that happens all the time in like shows or series or animes where like there is a character that is powerful but they don't want to actually hurt anybody so it like vastly limits how powerful the, or how much stronger or like or, or like them actually fighting people it basically puts a limit on them because they don't want to hurt people like the first person i can think of that would be noelle from black clover in the beginning noelle subconsciously didn't want to hit anybody which is why she'd always miss using her magic which is similar to donnie right well i guess it's it's similar but not really donnie just does like he can't hit people he just chooses not to but it didn't look like he had too too much issue when he was slicing up doranok like he's taking all kind of cuts all over the place like doranok was getting literally sliced up he's about to lose from bleed damage essentially fighting against donnie which which just really shows how powerful Donnie is if he's able to keep up with a, um, if he's able to keep up with like a, you know, one of the uh, dark talismans, like a Camelot assassin. Almost makes me feel like if Elgin didn't have the magical ability he did, Donnie potentially may have been able to beat him straight up. And he more than likely could have beaten Burgi straight up too. It's, it's weird because with Donnie, with Donnie's fighting expertise and his ability, he this might have like propelled him to be like, 
up there with Nansen's and with Annie. At the bare at the bare minimum, with his magical ability, he should be over Annie, in my opinion. Like Annie could probably fight better than he can, but because he has an actual like ability that he can use in a fight that kind of puts him over Annie to me personally but I'm um, Dornock you know with all of his slices and cuts he's, he's bleeding all over the place he uses his muscles to kind of like flex and then like close all of his like cuts and all that which is cool I always thought that was dope even back with like Netero and like Hunter Hunter or whenever that happens when people like flex and close their like wounds that's always cool and he charges that dining to which he begins to use his magic again to lift him up because he doesn't want to get hurt like because Dornock is just too powerful for Donnie so he tries to lift him up but then Dornock starts to use his magic again which blows Donnie away and, and Donnie like he's like you know forget it I can't beat him you know with my floating magic it's just not possible and it's funny because Sin comes out with the famous line like your darkness swallowed up my son who decided that show off now what are you trying to do give us all a heart attack who decided that for you and it's in explaining to Donnie that you know like magic is all in your image it doesn't have any kind of set pattern at least this is how you know we're getting a closer look into how magic works in seven deadly sins well we're getting a closer look to see how magic works in the seven deadly sins verse he tells him to think of it more like molding clay like you can make it a sphere a cube you can flatten it you can take it apart you can do all kind of things with your magic it's all how you see it so Donnie has always just been subconsciously limiting himself with how he can use his magic seeing as he only thought of it as a floating magic which also could kind of in turn explain why Percival I mean granted Percival does have hero type magic but he has such a wide array of things he can do with it probably because he's so naive and his imagination is all over the place so this is when Sin at literally asked Donnie what is your magic and Donnie says it's only lifting things up and then Sin is like that right there you're limited by your imagination so Sin gets Donnie to think of Dornok as a stone and like pick him up with his hand and just like throw him like he gets him to envision a new way to use his magic which is really important because from here Donnie can grow even more and he tells Donnie that his magic is telekinesis which is interesting to me because I've always seen telekinesis as more of like a mental ability not necessarily magic per se like I wouldn't see I wouldn't like say like Jean Grey is magic but I mean it's seven deadly sins their verse they can do whatever they want so if it's magic is telekinesis it's magic is telekinesis who, who cares <laughs> but from there donnie does quite literally throw door knock into next week bouncing them off all kind of trees does tons of damage i would imagine nobody wants to be thrown off of a bunch of trees and essentially donnie won that fight and it's funny because they're all celebrating that they've beaten three of the dark talismans or i guess yeah three of the uh, dark talismans and then annie's like you know you only won because of sin's advice but essentially they all Besides Nansen's. Actually, no, even Nansen's, because Sin had this the whole plan against um, Elgin. Like, all of them basically won with a little bit of help from Sin here and there. Which finally procs Percival to ask Sin, who is he really? Which, if you don't know, I recently just made a video about, you know, Sin and his relation to Arthur and being from Camelot and all that stuff. Make sure you check out that video if you haven't already, because that's a good watch. But from there, Doorknock does get back up, interrupting the conversation that they were having so we might we're definitely not going to get that answer yet maybe in the future soon potentially but just not right now and as Doranok gets back up there's like a shutter across the whole battlefield and it is the leader of the dark talismans you know kind of berating his squad mates saying like oh you call yourself dark talismans we were supposed to meet in 10 minutes and he just appears behind percival with uh, the relief or the dragon handle in his hand and that's where the chapter ends so it's really exciting because I already know one thing is going to happen for sure in the next chapter, and uh, this guy, I forget his name, he's definitely probably going to kill, <laughs> he's definitely going to kill Burgie and Doranok for sure, just like he killed the, the Aspiratory guy, because he seems like that kind of leader that just doesn't tolerate failure at all, so he's probably going to actually finish them off, and then we're going to get the entire group versus this guy, which the fight could go a couple of ways. I'm not for sure if Percival is going to be able to get his sword back. We might see this guy actually just take Percival's sword and then he gets to use his Ouroboros. I would love to see Percival use Ouroboros since that weapon actually is special. I mean, the, the Dragon Relief sword that Percival has now isn't truly that special outside of the relief piece itself. Outside of the actual Dragon Key, the sword itself isn't special. Whereas the Ouroboros that Percival has in his bag is special. That sword can grow and stuff. So and I'm pretty sure it has other magical properties. So now that Percival knows how to combine his magic with his weaponry, I'm pretty sure that would be hype to see him fight with that as well. So I, I, I kind of that's kind of what I want to happen the most, honestly. Um, as for what else could happen, it's probably the more likely case is going to be all four of them 
against this guy trying to fight it out but they're probably not going to be able to stand a chance against him but that that's probably where the next chapter is going to go there's also the slim chance that they do all try to fight against him but they're just absolutely no match for him but sin has to step in and then beat them or there's a possibility we can get all of those things combined we can get literally all of that happen over the course of the next couple chapters all at once which that would be like ideal best case scenario for me i am curious to know what you guys think is going to happen with that in the next chapter because that's just like there's a lot of ways that that this could go but but as far as this chapter goes i thought it was really hyped to see like more of donnie's abilities we got to see donnie's magic or just more of what donnie can do there's a lot of potential for him i might make a video about donnie next in the future like in the very immediate future just to like really talk about all the things that he can do because with, with telekinesis there's a there's a wide scape of things that you can do with that. So Donnie could potentially be really, really broken. But that's all I really wanted to say about this chapter. I would probably give it like seven and a half. It was, it was mo most of the hype came from all of the Donnie hype because I've been waiting for Donnie to do something for a long time. So let me know how you guys feel about the chapter down below with you guys' ratings, what you guys think is going to happen next. Make sure you guys like the video as well as subscribe to the channel. The Donnie video will probably be coming out relatively soon just because I'm excited to talk about it. So you guys enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you all in my next video. Thank you.